Okay, so today's topic is atopy or atopic dermatitis, which is actually a really relevant problem right now. So atopic dermatitis is basically a contact allergen with the skin. So when I talk about contact allergen, I'm not talking about the dog lying directly on the grass causing a problem. What we basically believe it is, is pollens, dust mites, those sort of things. So pretty much anything that causes hay fever or asthma in people can cause atopic dermatitis in our pets. And the really classic signs of atopic dermatitis Seasonality is a very big one, so if you find your dog's getting itchy in every spring and summer, it settles down over winter and then flares up again, that's a real you've got a red flag for, for an atopic dermatitis. Um, but also, like I said, can be dust mites and things like that, so we don't always get that, those seasonal sort of changes. Now, the, the classic areas affected by, dermato by atopic dermatitis are areas without much in the way of fur, so paws, bellies, ears and armpits are the classic spots. So, times where we get very suspicious of an allergy if we have recurrent ear infections. Generally, we do have an underlying allergy as the, as the cause of that. Um, same with kind of scratching the belly, kind of licking the paws. They're all signs of, of uh, an allergy. So we find quite often people kind of come in saying, oh, my dog's licking its paws, but I think it's habit. The reality is it's not a habit. It's just those paws are constantly itchy. And dogs, just like kids, they don't have a lot of discipline for kind of not, li not licking. So it becomes a recurrent problem. And what can happen secondary to this um, allergy, the allergy creates heat and moisture. And particularly places like the ears, that heat and moisture builds up. And that's a perfect environment for bacteria and yeast to, to go a bit nuts. And so we end up with those infections. Same thing happens with the pores and in the skin. So we generally need to be looking at treating the, the secondary infections, but as much as possible, we want to control the underlying allergy as well. So ways we can go about it, if we've got an infection, then we generally need, need to treat it. So that might be um, medicated shampoos, it might be ear drops, it depends a bit on where the infection is and what sort of infection. But if we can do a little bit to, to sort of minimise our, our medication, that's really a good start. So pretty much any dog that's got um, atopic dermatitis, things I really recommend is weekly bathing, particularly over spring and, and summer in the bad time of year. So what we recommend is something like um, EpiSoothe, so a note mill based shampoo. So what you do is basically uh, wet the whole dog, apply the shampoo right over the whole dog, leave it for around 10 to 15 minutes and then rinse it off. And what that does is it helps remove any of the of the pollens or the allergens that are in contact with the dog's skin. We then use uh, some sort of leave-in conditioner, so we, uh, I like the poor Nutriderm conditioner, and that's very much a, a soothing sort of conditioner. Actually, I just realised I grabbed the shampoo bottle there, but um, it looks looks very similar. Um, and basically what, what you do, apply the conditioner right over the dog and leave it on, so don't actually rinse that off. And what that does is it just creates that barrier function. So it, it's soothing, but also creates a barrier between the the pollen or the allergen and the skin. One of the things we notice with these allergy dogs is they do often have a have a defective oil barrier in the skin, and we don't know if it's a chicken or the egg sort of situation. So we don't know whether the um, allergy is affecting the oil barrier or whether the defective oil barrier is contributing to the to the allergy. Um, so what we generally recommend is using a product. I mean, I, love, I use Megaderm in my own dog, and what we're doing is basically supplementing the zinc and fatty acids so that the dog's oil. Um, skin oil barrier can um, be as healthy as possible effectively. If those things don't work, then we might add in things like antihistamines, um, steroids, or um, other sort of newer anti-itch medications. So, so it's a little bit of a case of tailoring it to each dog, but the more we can use sort of the gentle um, bathing sort of techniques, the less we rely on systemic medications, which although they're quite safe, obviously have the risk of side effects and, and other such problems. As for ages of when dogs are likely to develop um, atopic dermatitis, we rarely see it in dogs less than six months of age. Um, and generally it's between that sort of six months and five years of age that it develops, but sometimes we see it develop in adult dogs and sometimes we see it in very, very young puppies, so even as young as 10 to 12 weeks. Um, but that's, that's pretty much the exception. One thing that can look very much like atopic dermatitis, which is always worth ruling out, is a food allergy. Now, whereas for people, food allergies tend to create that acute sort of response, so the breathing issues or kind of coming up in hives, dogs will tend to show up, maybe as, as gut problems, so it might be a bit of vomiting and diarrhea or, or, or a sore tummy, but more often than not, it's actually a skin issue which looks exactly like the atopic dermatitis. So what your vet may recommend Depending on how it presents, what time of year um, your dog presents, your vet may actually recommend doing a food trial as well, um, and that helps 
kind of rule out a food allergy or, or diagnose a food allergy. And from there, you can be pretty sure whether or not we've got an atopic dermatitis and you can develop a treatment plan from there. Um, but yeah, this is, like I say, this is a bad time of year. So most animals we're seeing at the moment, if your dog's licking its paws, got recurrent ear infections, any of those sort of things, it's probably atopic dermatitis and yeah, it's worth seeing your vet to help get it sorted.